ओम सहना सह नो मुनक्त सह वीर कर्वाह तेजस्वीना वितमस्तु मिदिषा वह ओ शांति 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 डी स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द इंजुरीज ऑफ द नी जॉइंट पर्टिकुलरली वील बी डिस्कसिंग ऑन द एम सी एल इंजुरीज एंड द ए सी एल इंजुरीज बट बिफोर वी प्रोसीड फॉर डिस्कशन let us briefly revise the anatomy of the knee joint knee joint is a complex joint in the body the problems relating to it are also complex here the dislocation is not common but the injuries to the various ligaments poses severe problems to the patient an unstable knee can spell doom to the well being of a person meniscal injuries and the fracture patella can further compound the problems it is imperative to know how your knee joint is structured before attempting to know about the injuries related to it now you will have to agree with me that the knee joint is the most remarkable joint in the body by any engineering standards being the most heavily stressed joint in the body it has amalgamated two apparently incompatible properties of stability and mobility during the complete extension it is very stable and during flexion it is very mobile it has a hinge joint between the lower end of the femur and upper end of the tibia and a saddle joint between the patella and the femur and hence it is rightly called as a compound synovial joint the stability of the knee joint depends on following ligaments on the medial side here in the anterior third it is supported by the anterior capsule and the extensor retinaculum on the middle third by the superficial and deep layers of tibial collateral ligament and in the posterior third the capsule is reinforced by the posterior oblique ligament expansions from the semitendinosus etc similarly on the lateral side in the anterior third the capsule and the lateral extensor retinaculum in the middle third the iliotibial band and in the posterior third by the arcuate complex formed by the fibular collateral ligament and a slip from the popliteus biceps femoris etc anterior posterior stability for this it has two cruciate ligaments one anterior and the other posterior who are the primary stabilizers in the anterior posterior plane anterior cruciate ligament acl restrains the knee during anterior glide it has two main functional components the smaller anteromedial bundle supports the knee based in flexion and the larger posterior lateral bundle supports the knee based in extension both are taut at the full extension posterior cruciate ligament pcl is thicker and is approximately twice as strong as either the anterior cruciate or the medial collateral ligaments it restrains the joint mainly during the posterior glide and is under tension throughout the whole range of the movement it has two wonderful structures in the form of menisci whose structures and function will be discussed in my next video lecture on the meniscal injuries now knee joint stability depends upon one mechanical axis of the joint two the body contours and three extra articular stabilizers like synovial capsule collaterals muscles tendons and four intra articular stabilizers like menisci and the cruciate ligaments 
Now let us start our discussion on the knee ligament injuries. Coming to the general principles of knee ligament injuries, looking at the etiology, first athletes. Knee ligament injuries are very common in athletes who are involved both in contact and non-contact sports. The injury could be either direct due to the collision with another athlete or indirect due to the rotation and twisting injuries. Two, rotorific accidents, RTA. Here the mechanism is usually direct and could be due to a dashboard injury. Three, fall from the height with twisting force. Coming to the mechanism of injury, as you can see in this particular diagram, the following are the common mechanism of knee ligament injuries. One is a direct vulgus force. Second is the rotational or twisting forces. In that, the first subtype is abduction, flexion and internal rotation of the femur on tibia. You can call it as ABFIR, ab fir. This causes damages to the medial structures like the tibial collateral, medial capsule and if more force is applied then even ACL and the medial meniscus may also get teared. Odonogi's unhappy triad indicates injuries to the medial structures plus ACL tear plus medial meniscal injury. The second subtype is adduction flexion and external rotation of the femur on tibia. Now you can remember it as ADFER, ad fair. It causes damages to the fibular collateral, lateral capsule, arcuate complex, popliteus, eyelid tibial band, biceps, common peroneal nerve, anterior, posterior or both cruciates. Third, Mechanism is the hyperextension force may cause either anterior or posterior cruciate ligament injuries. The fourth mechanism, anteroposterior displacement, either the anterior dashboard injury or a posterior cruciate may be injured due to a direct force in the RTA. Coming to the goals of treatment, the goals of treatment in knee ligament injuries are restoration of the anatomy and stability to normal and or near to normal. Now with this consideration, general consideration, let us start the discussion on the collateral ligament injuries. Collateral ligament injury is due to the direct or indirect violence as described earlier. Medial collateral ligament injury is more common due to the vulgar stress caused by striking the lateral aspect of the knee joint during collision in the sports. The various force on the medial side required to cause the lateral collateral injury is less common because of the protection offered by the other leg. However, a severe various force may cause avulsion of the lateral collateral ligament from the head of the fibula as shown in the above diagram A. Now, do you know that what is Pellegrini Stradar disease? It is a calcification seen at the adductor tubercle visualized on AP X-ray of the knee joint in MCL injury of greater than 6 weeks. You can see in this particular X-ray the calcification at the adductor tubercle. Mechanism wise this has already been described. Types depending upon the degree of tear collateral ligament injuries are graded into three types american medical association has classified ligament injuries as shown in the above table now here we should remember the strain is the term to describe muscle and tendon injuries whereas a sprain is the term used to describe the ligament injuries now, the sprains are classified into three degrees, first degree, second degree and third degree. In first degree, 
there is minimal tear less than one third of the substance and hence local tenderness is minimal there is no instability and joint separation if at all present is less than 5 mm whereas in second degree more than one third and less than two third disruption is there tenderness is present little bit more instability will be present and the joint separation will be more than 5 mm up to 10 mm whereas in case of third degree a complete disruption is seen tenderness is severe instability is severe and joint separation is more than 10 mm coming to the clinical features the patient gives history of vulgus and external rotation force in the mild sprains in severe sprain the patient gives a history of vulgus stress force due to the direct blow on the lower thigh or the upper leg commonly in the contact sports like football or rugby etc as shown in this particular picture now it may be associated with acl tear or a meniscal injury and then the patient may present with the pain swelling hemarthrosis on examination the point of local tenderness could be at the adductor tubercle joint line or at the insertion of the tibial collateral ligament about 10 to 20 percent of the patients have damage to the extensor mechanism of the knee as well the various clinical tests which we use these are the abduction stress at 30 degree knee flexion and in extension the amount of opening on the medial side should be assessed then to rule out the associated injuries you must do the anterior driver test as shown in the first picture and the latch one test as shown in the second picture investigation wise stress radiograph at 15 to 20 degrees of fulgus you can see there is a medial joint opening on the right side which is suggestive of the medial collateral ligament here the MRIs they help to localize the MCL tear, ACL injuries, meniscal injuries, etc. Arthrogram and arthroscopy to evaluate and rule out the meniscal and the crucial pathology. Treatment wise, fresh injury, non operative treatment is the mainstay of treatment. First degree sprain, symptomatic treatment including non steroid anti inflammatory drugs, etc. Second degree sprain, long leg cast for 4 to 6 weeks with the knee in 30 to 40 degrees of flexion as shown in above picture. Then third degree sprain, surgical repair in isolated tears, repair and reconstruction in old tears or in associated injuries, brace is required for 4 to 7 months. In old cases, here the surgery is the mainstay of the treatment and consists of mainly reconstruction tibial collateral ligament tcl injuries if the tcl is intact but lacks then distal transfer is done if ligament is destroyed reconstruction using the hamstrings or the semitendinosus is done the fibular collateral ligament injury if adequate and thick distal transfer is recommended if destroyed reconstruction using the facial lata or the biceps tendon etc has to be done with this we end the discussion on the collateral ligament injuries now let us focus on the anterior cruciate ligament injury of all the knee ligament injuries acl tear is the most common acl provides the anteroposterior stability it provides proprioception and the mechanical function coming to the mechanism of acl tear mechanism of anterior cruciate ligament tear has already been discussed the most common mode of injury is external rotation with abduction of the flexed knee or hyperextension of the knee in internal rotation now this is a disabling injury and the knee may immediately collapse 
and the is very painful clinical features popping sensation felt or heard at the time of injury signifies the ligamentous injury particularly in case of the acl tears the patient also tells that the knee give way or buckled at the time of injury the swelling of the knee could be either due to the hem arthrosis or the traumatic synovitis and the distended knee is held in partial flexion by the hamstrings now here we must remember the 67% of the acl tear is force related and before we proceed further let us have a note of differential diagnosis of hem arthrosis so the first differential diagnosis is ligamentous tear it may be acl or pcl etc second the osteochondral fractures then did you know galen first described acl tear in ad 170 then while doing a clinical examination always examine the normal knee first because it forms a basis for comparison clinical findings depends on associated ligamentous injury or the meniscal injury and the bone damage depending on the combination there will be specific instabilities that will allow the anterior displacement of tibia on the involved side now let us see various clinical tests the various or valgus stress tests now this test is performed with the patient in supine position and usually knee flex to 30 degrees for valgus stress test one hand is on the lateral aspect of the knee and the other at the ankle the force is applied outwards inference positive in injury to the medial structure of the knee like tibio collateral ligament for various stress or the adduction uh, test change the hand to the medial side of the knee and give an adduction force inference positive in the injury to the lateral structures of the knee like fibular collateral ligament injury the another important test is the lachman test now this is an anterior drawer test done at the 20 to 30 degrees of knee flexion with patient in supine position it indicates the acl tear this test used in acute injuries to test acl tear where uh, knee cannot be flexed to 90 degrees and thus it has the several advantages over the 90 degree flexion anterior drawer test the following are some of them the first advantage is it can be done in the presence of effusion and hence is useful in acute cases when the knee cannot be flexed up to 90 degree two it evokes less pain as full flexion is not required three hamstrings and torn menisci will not block the forward glide easily four it is more specific for the posterior lateral fibers of acl tear now the grading of lachman test have been described three grades have been described as follows one grade one the end field appreciation is 0 to 5 mm displacement grade two visible anterior movement of tibia 5 to 10 mm displacement and grade three gross anterior tibial translation more than 10 mm displacement the anterior drawer test the patient is in the supine position hip is flexed to 45 degrees anteriorly and then knee to 90 degree examiner sits on the dorsum of the foot and pulls the tibia forward if tibia shifts for more than 6 to 8 mm anteriorly then it indicates the acl tear the anterior drawer test is done in three positions first foot in the neutral position if positive it indicates acl tear second foot in 15 degrees of internal rotation thereby tightening the lateral structures if positive indicates damage to the anterolateral structures and third foot in 15 degree external rotation tightening the anteromedial structures if positive anteromedial instability is indicated 
posterior driver test it is performed in the same way as for the anterior driver test here instead of pulling tibia anteriorly it is pushed backwards positive test indicates the involvement of uh, the PCL tear and it movement the tibia goes backwards pivot shift test the patient is supine knee is extended with a vulgar stress applied on the knee and the tibia is internally rotated the knee is then slowly flexed subluxation occurs at 30 to 40 degrees a positive test indicates acl tear now there are certain disturbing facts about acl tear as acl tear occurs it leads to the knee stability instability and repeated episodes of instability leads to damage to the menisci cartilage and other ligaments and this ultimately leads to the secondary osteoarthritis knee investigation wise radiograph of the knee the view recommended are anteroposterior ap view lateral view and intercondylar notch view and sunrise view vtc now here the first x-ray shows ap view and the intercondylar notch view the second x-ray shows the sunrise view the radiographs are usually normal in acl tear the avulsion fracture of the tibial spine if present indicates the acl tear now you can see this uh, condylar notch view the second picture the tunnel view we call it you can find the fracture of the tibial spine Sagan fracture. Did you know what a Sagan fracture is? It is an aversion fracture of the inferior lateral capsule adjacent to the tibia. Now you can see it is marked by a red circle in above x rays. If present, it suggests a CLTR. MRI this is the best diagnostic tool. It is non invasive and demonstrates the ACLTR with remarkable accuracy. This is the gold standard investigation for ACL tear and has virtually replaced all other investigations. Then KT1000. This measuring system documents anteroposterior tibial displacement by tracking the tibial tubercle in relation to the patella. More than 3 mm anterior displacement at 20 pounds predicts the ACL tear and with a 94% accuracy. Coming to the treatment part of the ACL tear, conservative, this is reserved for grade 1 and grade 2 tears, consists of rest, long leg cast for 4 to 6 weeks, NSAIDs and physiotherapy ETC. Then surgery is reserved for more severe tear and the technique vary from primary repair, reinforcement or reconstruction of the ACL ligament depending upon the extent and duration of the time. Orthoscopically assisted ACL reconstruction has been universally advocated due to these superior results. The treatment of the fresh ACL tear, primary repair is indicated in young adults and athletes. Repair is successful if the ACL is torn at its femoral or the tibial attachment. It is not successful in the mid-substance tear. Failure rate is as high as 50%. Reinforcement of the ACL should be augmented except when the avulsion with the fragment of the bone. The reinforcement could be either intraarticular or extraarticular or both by using the aleutibial band semitendinosus tendon ATC. Reconstruction in the chronic ACL insufficiency could be either intraarticular or extraarticular replacement by using quadriceps tendon patella tendon, bone patella tendon, bone graft, BPTV, semitendinosus tendon or gracilis etc. These autographs are preferred over the allografts. The allografts are reserved for revision of ACL reconstruction and rupture of both ACL and PCL. Now let us see the surgical technique of ACL reconstruction in a nutshell. The various steps include Step 1, graft harness and preparation. Step 2, notch plasty. Step 3, tibial tunnel placement. Step 4, 
femoral tunnel placement and finally step 5 the graft passage Auto grafts widely used in reconstruction of the ACL tear includes the central one third of the patella tendon, BPTB grafts, or the semitendinosus and the gracilis tendons. Vital points ACL tear is common in the young active people, usually athletes may interfere with the activity or it may make activity impossible. Usually, it does not tear in isolation associated with other ligament injuries. It may predispose to the meniscal lesion and it may predispose to the osteoarthritic changes. Now before we end, I want to talk to you about one more important topic. Happy key to lose weight. Dear students, one of the commonest problems we are facing in our routine clinical orthopedic practice is of obesity. Eat less and exercise more formula for treating obesity has been proved the failed formula. Of late, I have been working on the latest, most scientific, evidence-based concept of weight loss, Happy Key. You may find few videos on this topic as well on my YouTube channel. The obesity among the medical student is at its peak nowadays. Due to obesity, not only they are bullied, but most of them also lose their self-confidence resulting in deteriorating performance in academics. For all of them, this online video course will be most valuable. If interested, you may visit my Facebook page, The Happy Key, or the website www.drsudhir.com. For details of this course, I recommend you all to watch my above mentioned video completely on YouTube. You can enroll for the course you may forward this video to others. The YouTube link is given as below. You can also attend my two hours paid workshop on Sunday from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. The registration fee is 299 rupees only. For registration link, contact me on my WhatsApp number 7997-168316. Register now. My mission is to help more than 10 lakh persons to lose weight and get lifetime freedom from their obesity without dieting and exercise using this happy key technique. Let us all come together to create a healthy and fit India. Please like my channel, subscribe it now and do recommend it to all your colleagues from other medical colleges. Please help me to help medical students all over the country. Your recommendation matters a lot for me. Thank you. Thank you for your subscription. If not visited yet, please do visit my YouTube channel. Like it, share it and subscribe it. Thank you.